Hello everyone, my name is Thomas Trautner and together with my colleagues from the University of Bergen in Norway, Fabian Bolte, Sege Stoppel and Stefan Bruckner, we developed Sunspot Plots, a model-based structure enhancement for dense scatter plots. And first of all, let me start by telling you what inspired and motivated us and why we thought that already established techniques are not enough. On the left you can see a scatter plot. It can be assumed that scatter plots represent 70 to 80% of graphs used in scientific publications. They encode individual data elements as markers placed on two ordered orthogonal dimensions. They can for example encode local and global regression patterns, clusters and outliers. But unfortunately, overplotting makes them less effective and these characteristics become increasingly hard to detect. Well-established techniques such as opacity regulation like alpha blending, the reduction of marker size and subsampling can increase the readability, but only to some degree. On the right side, you can see a density-based visualization using a heat map. They interpret the data points as samples of a continuous phenomenon, for example by using a kernel density estimation. Even if datasets are highly overplotted, global patterns and density distributions remain visible. But unfortunately, they are not well suited to depict individual data points and local variations anymore. Our goal was a novel technique that communicates dense data as continuous data distribution, while preserving the discrete nature of data samples in sparsely populated areas, so-called sunspot plots. We therefore started our research by exploring related and inspiring work that is already out there. Splatter plots, for example, combine smooth polygonal shapes enclosing dense regions and subsampled outlier. Unfortunately, these color blending may synthesize new colors that are difficult to interpret. Similar to their approach, we consider a kernel density estimation as an elegant solution which is not limited by the number of underlying data points. A second work that inspired us was ellipsoid pixel placement in combination with shading. Related to their approach, we believe that additional illumination cues can emphasize local variation and highlight structures. A study that also influenced our design process was a spatialization design paper comparing points and landscapes. Within their setup, we consider the choice of the right camera position as especially relevant since occlusions can much easier occur in 3D than in 2D. Continuous scatter plots represent another approach that can handle an increasing data size while avoiding overplotting, but unfortunately, they do not preserve the discrete nature of the data in sparse regions. Stream maps represent an approach that is capable of smoothly blending points using an adaptive kernel density estimation again showing that kernel kind of density estimations are not only popular in statistics, but also in visualization. Another inspiration from a related field is the visualization of graphs as continuous fields, rendered as color-coded maps, height fields, or set of contours. In summary, these and many other related papers have inspired us, and next I finally want to introduce you to Sunspot Plots. Sunspot plots represent a visualization technique that communicates dense data as a continuous data distribution while preserving the discrete nature of data samples in sparsely populated areas. To create an expressive sunspot visualization, our technique requires 4 plus 1 steps. The first step is rendering the dataset as a classical scatter plot with regular opacity regulation using a discrete kernel. The next optional step is a pilot kernel density estimation which is only required if the user prefers an adaptive kernel density estimation where the kernel size is small if the region is dense and the kernel size is large if the region is sparse. The second step is the actual smooth and continuous kernel density estimation using either a fixed or an adaptive kernel size. The third step is a reconstruction of a surface model based on the estimated density from step 2. And finally, we plant the discrete as well as the continuous representation based on the estimated surface model, including the possibility to additionally apply an illumination model emphasizing surface properties. In the following, I want to describe the individual steps in detail. As already mentioned, the first step is interpreting the data as a discrete phenomenon by depicting the sample points as conventional scatter plot. We therefore consider the individual points as samples of a probability density function fh of x and a discrete kernel function k. We do this by applying a kernel function k with bandwidth h, compute the distance from a point x in space to all n sample points xi of the dataset. If a point in space is close enough to a sample, the kernel returns 1, otherwise 0. The result corresponds to an opacity regulated scatter plot that already allows the user to distinguish between different densities until an opacity threshold is reached. 
In order to capture the continuous phenomenon of the data, we interpret the underlying distribution as two-dimensional fields that we can approximate through a model. Again, we consider the individual sample points as samples of a probability density function, where the probability density function at the point x can be computed through the addition of kernels at the positions of each data sample. Assuming that k again is a kernel function, h the corresponding kernel bandwidth, and n the number of samples xi and sigma defines the width of the Gaussian kernel. The possible result is shown as color-coded image on the right, where blue corresponds to the sparse and yellow to the very dense regions. By using an on-the-fly kernel density estimation, we can even achieve an interactive performance, allowing the user to adapt individual parameters in real time. In the following step, we utilize the strength of both approaches. With the Porter Duff overoperator, we smoothly blend the continuous surface model over the discrete data representation using an importance function alpha. The importance function alpha corresponds to the normalized continuous probability density function and can directly be used as surface opacity while blending. As shown in the image on the right, the resulting visualization emphasizes discrete samples in sparse regions and the surface reconstruction where enough samples were present. Our resulting visualization is already capable of encoding the distance to the surface. In other words, the absolute value of the probability density function by using colors. Additionally, we want to be able to encode important visual attributes like the orientation of slopes and the impression of contours, which can be seen as accessibility of the surface area. In other words, to which degree its hemisphere is obscured by neighboring surfaces. Therefore, we add the support for local illumination models like for example Fong or Blind Fong in combination with ambient occlusion. Next, I want to demonstrate the strength of sunspot plots based on three real-world datasets from different scientific fields. As first example, I want to present the 2014 Boston Marathon dataset, containing the results of approximately 32,000 participants. The x-axis of these plots encode the BAV number, which is assigned to each participant, depending on the qualification time. The faster he or she was, the lower the number and the earlier the starting time. The y-axis encodes the total time in hours the participant needed to finish the complete marathon. The figure on the left shows a classical scatter plot, using opacity regulation including an orange polynomial trendline as an overlay. The figure on the right shows the same dataset visualized using sunspot plots. In comparison to classical heat maps, in our visualization, the individual points within sparse regions are preserved similar to scatter plots. For example, the participants of the wheelchair race within the lowest BAB numbers, with a finishing time between 1 and 2 hours. In addition, it becomes visible that sunspot plots, in comparison to classical polynomial trend lines, clearly show the trend can be well approximated with a BAB number between 0 and 27,000, but only fuzzy and less meaningful between 27 and 36,000. A second example, I want to present a dataset containing the geospatial locations of cities with more than 500 inhabitants worldwide, accounting for approximately 190,000 entries in total. In this example, sunspot plots can help to explore the agglomerations of cities and reveal environmental conditions that influence cities' development, such as mountain chains or valleys. The red circle, for example, visualizes our magic lens feature, revealing the exact catchment areas and suburbs of Paris. It uncovers inhabited areas and the resulting large-scale road network in northern France. Right next to it, we can observe large clusters around Frankfurt, Zurich and Milan. It simultaneously shows that the cluster around Frankfurt is more widely populated than the concentrated area around Zurich. And because of the Alps, the area between Switzerland and Italy is only sparsely populated. Finally, and in contrast to pure density encoding, I want to draw your attention to the individual cities that remain clearly visible, although the surrounding country is evenly but only sparsely populated, for example Lithuania or Russia. As last example, I want to present a sunspot plot of a database of handwritten digits containing 10,000 grayscale images of the labels 0 to 9. This example should again justify our design decisions. The figure on the left shows a heat map representation in comparison to a naively blended combination of both, a heat map and a scatter plot in the middle, where points are simply drawn on top of a heat map, and a classical opacity regulated scatter plot on the right. Although this dataset is comparably small, it already becomes visible that when naively blended, it is no longer possible to perceive the density of regions that contain sample points. The figure on the right visualizes the same dataset as sunspot plot, including annotations of the implicitly created clusters of the corresponding numbers from 0 to 9. Our main concern was that blending of individual points and density representations might negatively influence the user perception. 
We therefore conducted a user study to analyze the human visual perception dealing with dense scatter plots, overplotting, and density estimations. In total, we compared five different visualization stimuli scatter plots, colored scatter plots, continuous heat maps, sunspot plots, and shaded sunspot plots. By assigning always one visualization type to each participant, we avoided the learning bias, and in addition, the order of the tasks was randomized. In total, we had 350 participants, corresponding to 70 per visualization type, ranging from 18 to 68 years. In the beginning of the study, participants saw a set of instructions and the practical trial, including the correct answer and how it can be obtained. Participants then had to perform two tasks and had to pass two attention checks. Each task consisted of six questions they had to answer. In the assigned task, user had to estimate the density value of an interval between 0 and 100 in a highlighted region within a visualization. The correct value was computed by using a regular kernel density estimation, where a value of 100 would correspond to the densest point in the data and 0 to the sparsest. The error was then computed as difference between the participant's answer and the average per pixel density within the highlighted region. In the comparison task, we highlighted three regions, A, B and C, and ask the user which region contains either the highest, the lowest, or if all regions have the same density. In total, we had three hypotheses. H1. Density-dependent color coding of individual scatterplot points increases the user's accuracy of estimating density values in comparison to scatterplots with alpha blending alone. H2. Sunspot plots do not perform worse than continuous heat maps for absolute and relative density estimations. And H3. Applying an illumination model in combination with ambient occlusion shading to sunspot plots improves the user accuracy when estimating density values. The study results clearly align with H1, and it can be seen that participants using colored scatter plots perform significantly better than participants who just use scatter plots. Our results additionally show that participants using continuous heat maps perform significantly better in both tasks than participants who just use color scatter plots. The results further clearly align with H2, and it can be seen that participants using sunspot plots did not perform worse than participants using continuous heat maps. Unfortunately, we could not confirm hypothesis number three. Users of sunspot plots and shaded sunspot plots did not perform significantly differently. However, as shown in the table, we saw a significant difference between users of continuous heat maps and shaded sunspot plots, showing that shaded sunspot plots provide a higher accuracy than continuous heat maps. To conclude, I want to summarize our contribution. First, we presented a novel kernel density-based visualization technique that unifies discrete and continuous representations of large bivariate data. And second, a user study with several hundred participants in which we compared five different visualization techniques based on two representative tasks during the analysis of bivariate data. Finally, I want to mention that this work was supported by the MetaVis project funded by the Research Council of Norway. Thank you very much for your attention, and if you have any questions, please feel free to ask now.